Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day so far. Um, wanted to pop on and talk to you guys about a message that God put on my heart today called Faith Has Follow Through. Amen. Faith has follow through. I wanted to pop on and tell you guys this today. Your actions demonstrate what you stand and what you believe, not just your words. Amen. I wanted to read you guys Luke 8, 21 today. This is going to kind of be our anchor scripture for this conversation today. It says, but he, Jesus, answered them, my mother and brothers are those who listen to the word of God and do it. Amen. So genuine faith in our personal lives is demonstrated by actions that back up that genuine faith. Amen. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. Now, this is not to say that it's all on us, but it is to say that you demonstrate with your actions where your faith truly lies based on your works and based on your actions, not just what you say you believe. Amen. You know, I think it's interesting that in the scripture, it says, my mother and brothers are those who listen to the word of God and do it. Nowhere in there does it say, are those who just believe in God. I thought that was interesting. Don't you guys? So in other words, Jesus is saying, you know, not everyone who claims to believe in me is actually kingdom fam, is actually a part of the fam. But it's those who not only listen to the word, who hear the word, you know, who believe the word, but who then who actually implement it in their personal lives. You know, a mature Christian is not just someone who knows a lot about the word. I know some scholars, some theologians, some people who, you know, they could knock a lot of us out of the park with their biblical knowledge, but they are more immature than some of the everyday believers that are just walking around because they have no follow through. Amen. Faith has follow through. You know, they know the right things, but they're not living the right things. Amen. And their personal life and your actions tell me more than I ever needed to know, you know, than your words ever will. You know, a lot of people have learned how to kind of get through life just because they don't want to hurt people's feelings or because, you know, they've kind of learned to navigate and they will say a lot of the right things. Right. And I don't even think that people have bad intent a lot of the time. Right. But there's no follow through. Amen. And it is the lack of follow through that number one demonstrates a lack of maturity, but also that demonstrates that their faith is not truly behind that thing that they say it's behind. Amen. And that's what we're talking about today. So maturity in our lives as a Christian is not just believing the right things. It's acting on the right things. Faith has works. Amen. And true faith will be in alignment with what you say. Amen. Your actions, your fruit, as the Bible calls it, will be in alignment with what you're saying. Because if what you say and what you're doing are different, it's not true faith. It's not genuine faith, as the Bible would describe it. Amen. And so here's why it's so important that we go through testing in our lives as a Christian. Now, I don't think any one of us truly enjoys this. Amen. None of us go, yay, God, sign me up for a line of testing in my personal life, right? But the Bible says that our faith has to be tested to prove to ourselves where we truly stand. Amen. And so a lot of times we say that we believe the right things, but it's in the storm. It's in the midst of the trial where you find out where your heart stands really is. Amen. You find out what you truly believe in. Amen. Because our words can say stuff all day long, but how do you react when you get that doctor's report? How do you react when your finances are going crazy? How do you react when that person treats you wrong? How do you react in whatever situation it is, right? And so when God tests you, he wants to show you your actions, not just your words, because your actions reveal the fruit on your life. It reveals where you're at. It's kind of like a status update, right? It's a status report. It's a bug report in our personal lives. And God has to test our faith in order to know whether or not we're ready for next level blessings or whether or not we need to go back around the mountain. Because remember, if God delivered a next level blessing that you were not ready for, you could abort it and it could actually hurt hurt you. And so this is why your faith being tested is so critical in the life of a Christian, because your actions tell me where your heart is. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Your actions tell me where your heart is. Let's say that you're investing in an opportunity and you claim that you're aligned with one thing, but you spend all of your time investing and talking to another thing. Your heart isn't with the thing that you said you were aligned with. Amen. Your heart is with this other thing. Amen. Faith has appropriate action to back it up. And if the action is different from what you're claiming, 
it's not true faith. It's not genuine faith. Amen. You can apply this to a bunch of different areas of your life, right? I wanted to tell you guys too that expressing intent is not the same as actually following through. You know, often we judge ourselves by the intents of our heart. Oh, I was meaning to get to that. Oh, I wanted to do this thing. But others judge us by our actions, by our fruit. And that's actually how our faith is tested, how we're judged in the kingdom of God. It Because it says those who not only listen to the word of God, but who actually do it. Amen. And so a lot of people will say the right things, but they will not follow through on those things, which shows you that their heart was never in it to begin with. So expressing intent is not the same as following through. I want to ask you guys a question today. Are you following through on what God has asked you to do in your personal life? Amen. So I wanted to give you a silly example of this. Uh, that I experienced recently. So I have a, a really good friend. She and I have been friends for um, quite a while now since kind of high school time frame. And um, she just has a crazy busy schedule right now. Like it is insane. I don't know how she keeps up with everything she's keeping up with right now. So full-time grad school student, um, but she also, you know, works a full-time job kind of a deal. And we had been talking about how we really needed to get together. It had been a while since we hung out or whatever. And um, basically, it was really hard to coordinate because we had alternating schedules with work. We've got X, Y, Z, and it's just not in alignment and all this stuff. It was just, you know, tough. Well, eventually, we, we brought up with each other, you know, that we needed to hang out again or whatever. And um, she texted me out of the blue late one night, and she said, hey, um, are you free this day? And I said, no, not actually, but I'm free these days or whatever. And she said, great, let's meet up tomorrow. Kind of a deal. And so we set kind of a time and a date for it or whatever. And when she showed up, she said this phrase that I just really felt like God made leap in my spirit as a direct result of me supposed to be hopping on to talk to you guys about this today. And she said, you know, um, I told her, I was like, thank you so much for making time to come see me. You know, I don't even know how you're able to do this with your schedule being this busy. And she looked at me and she said, you know, Jill, really, I'm probably not able to. But she said, you're so important to me that I made time for you. I made the time. Listen to me, ladies and gents. You know, I can tell you what what you prioritize in your life by two primary areas, okay? How you spend your time, number one, what you make time for in your personal life, and how you allocate your money. Amen? I can, I can tell you a lot about who a person is based on looking at those two things. Amen? And so I want to remind you guys today that people make time for what is important for them. Amen. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, right? And we will force certain things out or bump them down on a lower priority list. Sometimes it doesn't even mean that we don't care about those things at all. But I can tell you what, what people prioritize the most by what they make time for in their personal lives. They will carve out time in their schedule. That's where that phrase comes from, is sometimes you've got to carve out time for for the things, for the people, for the places that are important to you. And so someone can say something is important to you, but if they are not carving out time for that thing, the faith is not in alignment with their actions. It's not actually as important as they are claiming for it to be. Amen. And so you've got to watch, where am I allocating my time? I claim to be in alignment with this thing. I claim to be, you know, pursuing this thing, having faith on this thing, but I'm spending all my time over here. It shows you where your heart is. Amen. It shows you what's truly going on deep on the inside. And this is why faith has to be tested. Amen. Because sometimes what we're claiming and what God sees that's really going on on the inside of us are in two very different places. And God wants to bring alignment to these things in our lives in this particular season. Amen. So again, people prioritize what is important to them. You know, I don't spend nearly as much time in my life listening to people's words because a lot of times people will say things just because they don't want to hurt you or they don't want things to be awkward, but I watch their follow through. Amen. The follow through will tell you everything that you need to know about a person, a situation, or a thing that you are encountering and experiencing in your personal life. And so I want to tell you guys to quit trying to force things that aren't bearing good fruit in your personal life. A lot of times we're trying to force other people to have follow through and that's not your responsibility. 
Amen. You're trying to force situations to have a follow through and that's not your responsibility either. Amen. What you are responsible for is your follow through. What you are responsible for is making sure that what you're claiming and what you're believing has the actions, the fruit to back it up. And so faith has follow through. Let me ask you a question today. You know, you claim that you want God to provide for you, but are you applying for jobs? You claim that you want God to provide for you, but are you starting the business? Faith has followed through. Amen. You claim that you like a person, but you're not asking them out. Faith has followed through. You claim that you want to see a person delivered, but are you praying for them? Faith has followed through. Amen. And I wanted to give you guys this example. You know, scripture says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Our steps are ordered. I want you guys to imagine that you are in a car and a GPS is talking to you and is trying to ride, provide direction on the way that you should go. Amen. So let's say that the car is stationary. You're sitting in a parking spot. You're not going anywhere. Is that GPS going to start talking to you? Absolutely not, right? Because there's no momentum. There's no acceleration. You are not taking any steps to drive that car. Amen. And so I want to tell you guys today, if you are not taking faith steps in your personal life, God cannot provide direction. It's kind of like a car that's just sitting there in a parking spot. God can want to do all the things for you in the world. He can want to tell you, you need to make a U-turn. This is not the right decision. He can tell you, you're on the right track. You need to turn at this next exit. He wants to tell you those things. But if you're not taking faith steps, Amen. If there's no follow through behind your actions or if the follow through is in misalignment, then there's not a whole lot that God can do with that. Amen. And so I want to tell you guys today, your follow through is critical and it demonstrates your maturity in Christ. And I really want you to examine those areas of your life where you're claiming one thing, but your actions are demonstrating another thing. Amen. How are you allocating your time and your resources? What do you run to first? Amen. That will show you a lot about where your heart truly lies and a lot about what God is trying to do in your personal life. You got to get in alignment. Ladies and gents, you know, God wants to do incredible things for you. And it's not all on us. It's not ladies and gents, but faith has follow through. It has actions behind it. It says those who in Luke 8, 21, my mothers and brothers are those who listen to the word and do it. Amen. God can't help a car that's not going anywhere. He can't help a stationary car. You know, he's like, give me something. Give me a little bit of movement. Give me a little bit of oomph, so to speak. And then I can provide direction. Then I can start talking to you. Amen. But we've got to have some follow through in our personal lives. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll chat with you again soon.